Good afternoon and welcome to Matador News. I'm Briseida Holgan. And I'm Nicole Sands. We are here with the latest national, local, and CSUN news. In Jerusalem, funerals are being held today for the four victims who were killed when two Palestinian men attacked a synagogue. Among the dead were three American citizens and one Brit. Masses of mourners gathered for a triple funeral honoring two of the Americans and the Brit this afternoon. A separate funeral is being held for the third American. President Obama is encouraging peace between Israel and Palestine. This is a tragedy for both nations, uh, Israel as well as the United States, and our hearts uh, go out to the families who uh, obviously are, are undergoing enormous grief right now. The two Palestine cousins launched their attack on Jewish worshipers during the morning prayers using meat cleavers and pistols. Along with the four rabbis who were killed, eight others were injured. The suspects were shot and killed by police officers. Kim Jong-il's bodyguard is speaking out about the brutality he experienced while imprisoned in one of North Korea's most notorious camps. When I got to Yodok, he says, people looked like walking skeletons. They had severe malnutrition, as did I. Plus, I'd been beaten so much, my weight dropped from 94 kilos to 58 kilos in six months. Young served as a bodyguard for the late North Korean leader for more than 10 years. He was imprisoned after trying to defect to South Korea. He was left blind in his left eye and with a total of six teeth remaining. Young says he knew he had to survive to tell the truth. North Korea has denied the, ex the existence of any prison camps. Senate Republican leaders have scheduled a vote later today on the completion of the Keystone XL pipeline. If approved, TransCanada's controversial pipeline would allow 830,000 barrels a day of crude oil to flow from Alberta, Canada to the Gulf of Mexico. About 40 percent of the project has already been built in two segments. Democrats hope President Obama will veto the bill to show his commitment to the environment. Labor unions, the oil industry, and Republicans say Obama's approval of the pipeline would create jobs and reduce imports from the Middle East. The Senate Department has or the State Department has estimated the construction phase would create about 42,000 temporary jobs and 50 permanent jobs. Iraq has accused ISIS of stealing one million tons of grain. Iraq's agriculture minister says the extremist group stole the grain from the country's northern region and delivered it to militant-controlled cities in Syria. Hundreds of thousands of Iraq farmers have been dis displaced since ISIS offensive attacks throughout the northwest a few months ago. Meanwhile, Obama president praises the selfless acts, acts of American aid worker Peter Kasig, who was beheaded by ISIS. Kasig is the fifth Western killed by the terrorist group. Iranian Foreign Minister Javad Mohammad Javad Zarif is in Vienna meeting with Western diplomats regarding the program's nuclear the country's nuclear program. It has been nine months of increased intense negotiations. Zarif says if the treaty fails because of excessive Western demands, Iran will still continue its efforts for a nuclear program despite economic sanctions. Diplomats say the U.S. would accept an enrichment program with 4,500 centrifuges, but Iran wants 10,200 to 8,000. Next Monday is the deadline for stipulations on the treaty to be agreed on. East Coasters better get those snowplow engines ready. Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, and New Yorkers can all expect below normal temperatures for this winter season. The northern Great Lakes region has already been covered in three feet of snow. While East Coasters are pulling out their parkas from their closets, Californians are enjoying 75-degree weather. LAUSD is scheduled to vote today on a mandatory ethnic studies course for high school students. Currently, only 19 out of 94 high schools offer these courses. If the proposal passes, LA Unified would be the second district in the state to require ethnic studies for graduation. Proponents say this is so people of color are not left out of the LAUSD curriculum. 90% of students in LAUSD high schools are of color and only 700 are taking ethnic studies courses. If it passes, the number of credits students need in order to graduate will increase. Now let's go to Matador News news reporter Sabella Scalise who's ha who has more on the on registration dates are on how registrations are date 
Who has, no, who has more on how registration dates are affecting students at CSUN? CSUN registration for the spring 2015 semester opened November 3rd. Athletes and priority registration students as well as graduating seniors get first choice, but other students have to wait longer to try and get classes. It's a little unfortunate. I was supposed to graduate in the spring, but because of registration in the past, I haven't been able to get the classes that I need. It's my first semester. I'm a transferring junior, and my enrollment date is early December, which I'm not too happy about. Because, you know, I don't know if I'm going to get all the classes that I'm planning on taking. The registration this semester was obviously really great. I got one of the first, like, dates, which is November 5th, so I had no problem with that. Uh, I haven't had like in the past that much trouble with it, even though if I was like a junior or sophomore, like I always got my classes. Once students log into their CSUN registration portal on their registration date, they are allowed to enroll in 13 units for their spring semester schedule. December 10th to January 15th is open registration, and students will be able to add more classes to get a maximum of 16 units. Communications Office Student Assistant Jasmine Crane says students are trying their hardest to get the classes they need before classes fill. I think I work in an office, so I kind of get to see behind the scenes of people trying to get, you know, permission numbers, this and that, and it's a little bit of a stressful time. I think it's more stressful than it should be, but um, once you finally get to senior year, things open up a little bit more, but until then, it's really difficult. CSUN students can now enroll in a class at any time or any place on their registration date. The CSUN mobile app has an enroll in the class feature available on any smartphone or tablet. Back to you in the studio with Joaquin Reyes, who has the latest in health. A surgeon who contracted Ebola working in Sierra Leone became the second patient to die of the virus in the U.S. Martin Salia was in critical condition when admitted on Saturday to the Nebraska Medical Center's biocontainment unit in Omaha. Medical Center's critical care division chief Daniel Johnson says Celia progressed to cardiac arrest. Dr. Celia was extremely critically ill when he arrived to our hospital. He had no kidney function. He was working extremely hard to breathe, and uh, he was unresponsive. New doses of the drugs used to treat Ebola are being produced after supplies were drained a couple months ago. Early treatment is critical when dealing with Ebola, but other factors such as age, the strength of one's immune system, play a role. Dr. Celia's wife said she is appreciative of the opportunity for her husband to be treated here and believes he was in the best possible place. Princess Cruises has confirmed that over 170 of its passengers on a month-long cruise caught the norovirus. The virus is an infectious stomach flu that causes consistent vomiting and diarrhea. The cruise ship took off on October 18th to Hawaii and Tahiti. Guests began to show symptoms of the illness about two weeks into their trip. When it returned to Los Angeles on Sunday, at least 158 of its 3,000 passengers and 14 out of 1,100 crew members were sick. Princess Cruises say it is taking extreme steps to disinfect the ship, which also infected previous passengers with the same virus almost six months ago. After the ship is disinfected again, it is scheduled to head out on its next voyage uh, along the Mexican Riviera. Let's toss it over to Lupe Yarenas for the latest beat on business. Kaiser Permanente patients in Southern California can now head to Target to get a checkup. Three Kaiser clinics inside Target stores are now open in Fontana, San Diego, and Vista. The change is due to a shortage of primary care doctors and an increase of newly insured patients under the federal health law. These in-store visits offer convenience and a board range of services including checkups, well woman exams, and physicals. The Black Friday 2014 madness is just one week away and, the, and Walmart has announced its full sales offers. Walmart stores will open their, sto their doors at 6 in the evening on Thanksgiving Day and will stay open through the night and all day Friday. Many buyers are already targeting electronic devices. One of the best technology deals Walmart is offering this year is a 16 gig iPad mini with, 30, with a $30 Walmart gift card for all just $199. Some employees are planning to protest over low wages, wages at 1,600 Walmart stores nationwide on Black Friday. For your sports report, let's toss it over to Joaquin Reyes. 
The NFL has suspended Adrian Peterson without pay for at least the remainder of the season after he pled no contest to misdemeanor assault on his son. The Players Association plans to appeal the decision because the discipline imposed is considered inconsistent. Commissioner Roger Goodell's letter to Peterson expresses concern over what he calls Peterson's lack of remorse. Goodell said, when indicted, Peterson acknowledged what he did, but he said that he would not eliminate whooping his kids and defending his conduct in numerous published text messages to the child's mother. Goodell says he's worried Peterson doesn't appreciate the seriousness of his conduct and may feel free to engage in similar conduct in the future. The Pittsburgh Steelers squared off against the Tennessee Titans on Monday Night Football. Titans rookie quarterback Zach Mettenberger was looking for his first win as a starter and the Steelers were looking to bounce back from last week's loss. Mettenberger showed off his big arm with an 80-yard touchdown to Nate Washington to end the first half. But the Steelers rallied back behind a career-best performance from Le'Veon Bell. He rushed for 204 yards on 33 carries and one touchdown as the Steelers punished the Titans with their relentless ground, ground game in the fourth quarter. The Steelers won 27-24 to improve to 7-4, while the Titans fell to 2-8. The Clippers took on Eastern Conference powerhouse Chicago Bulls at the Staples Center last night. The Bulls were without their stars Derrick Rose and Pau Gasol, but still had plenty of firepower. Jay Crossover dazzled the crowd with his trademark handles and buried this circus shot for an and-one. But Jimmy Butler and the Bulls had too much for the Clippers, pleasing the surprisingly pro Bulls crowd at Staples. The Clippers fought back, but had no answer for the Bulls' defensive intensity. Bulls' chance drowned out the home crowd as they defeated the Clippers 105-89. The Clippers head to Orlando to take on the Magic Wednesday. Let's bring it back to Lupe with an update on entertainment. Fans of Matthew McConaughey can now visit his Walk of Fame star on Hollywood. The Academy Award-winning actor was honored Monday with his own Hollywood Walk of, Walk of Fame star. McConaughey has starred in more than 40 films and was recognized for his work through, throughout the years. The actor was surrounded by his wife, three children, and many exciting fans. Sunday is a nice day for a white wedding, at least in the case of Solange Nose and Adam Allen Ferguson. Beyonce's sister and the video director tied the knot in New Orleans in front of 200 guests this past weekend. 28-year-old Knowles and 51-year-old Ferguson arrived at their wedding on, a white on white vintage bicycles. She wore a, a cream pantsuit and a cape by Stephanie Rowland, and the groom wore a white suit. Ferguson has directed videos for artists including Katy Perry, John Lennon, and Beyonce. This is all for your entertainment. Now let's toss it back to Briseida and Nicole. Thank you for watching Matador News. I'm Nicole Sands. And I'm Briseida Holgan. Have a great day, Matadors.